Welcome and thank you to our guests, for you members and Fresh Pass subscribers. We're so pleased you could join us today. I'm Chef Marl Banks, Culinary R&D Manager for Albertsons, and today we're going to be making some super simple and delicious recipes that you'll be able to find in a new feature on our app. And within this new meal planning feature, you will be able to customize menus to go with your family's dietary preferences, whether you follow a paleo, vegan, keto, low carb, or just a classic diet, if you have allergies, if you want things that are quick or a little bit more interesting and exciting, if you want to follow different cuisines, there's many, many recipes to choose from. And within the app, you're able to select the recipe, plan the meal by shopping for your ingredients. You'll be able to add them directly either to your list or to a cart for delivery, which is a great benefit for our Fresh Pass subscribers who enjoy that free delivery. And also to take advantage of the extra 5% savings on o organic and open nature products. And then when you're home and ready to start cooking, you'll be able to follow step by step in the app and even go hands free. Just wave your hand over the phone to advance to the next step and our app will even set timers for you when necessary. So it's a great new feature. We're very excited to show that to you today. So let's get cooking. Let's begin making our vegan granola banana bread cookie ice cream sandwiches. If you're following along in the app, just search for the vegan granola banana bread cookie ice cream sandwich recipe and you'll be able to follow along the steps with me. I've preheated an oven to 350 and lined a sheet pan with parchment paper and assembled all my uh, ingredients around me. As we follow along in the steps, I'm going to do my best to follow along with the app, but as any chef will tell you, um, while the app is fast, a chef likes to have everything measured and organized before we begin. So. Step number one is to take our banana, and you want a riper banana for this. We're getting our sweetness and a lot of our moisture in our cookie from our banana, so you want one that's got some dark spots to it and that is fully ripe. We'll just peel. We don't need to do anything fancy with the banana. We're going to be mashing it up. You want to choose a nice large banana. If the bananas available in your market are smaller, maybe use two. You want to definitely have about two-thirds of a cup or so of mashed banana to make sure our cookies are nice and moist. So we'll just break them up and put them into the bowl and mash them with a fork. You can also use a, a potato masher for this if that's easier. We want to just mash until the banana is a nice even puree. To our mashed banana, we're going to add some coconut oil, brown sugar, and vanilla. So I've got the banana mostly mashed. I'm gonna measure in my coconut oil. And if, if it's very cold in your kitchen, the coconut oil will tend to solidify. You can warm it a few seconds in the microwave to make it easier to measure out. And we want two tablespoons of coconut oil. So just scoop it into your measure, level it off, and add it into the bowl. Two tablespoons, and I'm making a recipe that uh, would be for four. So if you're only making two servings, you'll need half the product. So that's our coconut oil. Third of a cup of brown sugar, and don't forget when you measure brown sugar, you'll want to pack it in. So to measure my sugar out, I just filled it in the bag, pressed on the side, and have my one third cup of brown sugar, which will add to the bowl and a teaspoon of vanilla. I'll just continue to mash that all together. The sugar and the vanilla will help to sort of break down any other pieces of the banana. Trying to make sure you break up all of the oil and get it thoroughly emulsified. Some pieces of banana here and there are not a problem. To our mashed banana mixture, I'm going to add one and a third cups of the organic chia and flax quinoa granola. You can use your favorite granola. This one is nice because you do have the flax and the chia, which are going to help to give some structure to your cookie. Um, they're great vegan egg substitutes. 
But I've also made this with regular granola. I actually tried it with a, with a hot chocolate granola for a chocolate cookie variation that was really fun. So we'll take this and if you see any larger pieces of granola, just try to break them up so that you don't have hard pockets within your cookies. And then just stir that into the banana. And again, the fork will help you sort of mash up some of those pieces as well. We need a half a cup of all-purpose flour. When you measure flour, always try to spoon it lightly into a cup and let it fall over the edges. You don't want to, unlike our brown sugar, you really don't want to pack this in at all. Overfill the cup and then use a spatula just to level things off to get a nice accurate measure. If you have a kitchen scale, that's even better to weigh your ingredients. Got half a cup of all-purpose flour. To this, we're going to add a quarter teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda, which I've already measured. Let's make sure we get everything in. You want just a pinch of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon, and half a teaspoon of cornstarch, which again, I'll measure the same way I did my flour, overfilling the spoon and just leveling it off. Once we have all of our dry me ingredients measured, we'll stir them together just to distribute the leavening and the salt evenly. And then we can add all of this dry ingredient into our granola cookie base. And we'll just stir this to make a nice even batter. You don't want to overmix it. You don't want bready cookies. You just want all that dry ingredient to get moistened. We can switch from our fork to a spatula. You want to make sure you scrape to the bottom of the bowl and turn it over. There's always a little bit of dry that hangs out hiding at the bottom. And this would be a great time to add in some nuts if you wanted to incorporate some chopped nuts or a little bit of mini chocolate chips, something like that to make it fun. You can really make it your own. Once we've got all the dry ingredients moistened, we'll scoop the batter onto our parchment lined baking pan. And I love to use a, a disher, an ice cream scoop like this is perfect so that all of our cookies are evenly sized, they bake evenly, and uh, match up when we go to put the ice cream in between. So we'll just, you want about a quarter cup scoop that's not quite all the way full. And we'll just scoop them out onto our tray. We should get eight of them here to make four sandwiches. Space them out evenly on your baking sheet. And if your banana was a little on the larger side, you may have some extra batter and you can just keep scooping that out and enjoy some more. Once we have our batter scooped, I'll take my small offset spatula and just lightly flatten the cookie into about a two inch round. They'll grow a little bit, so you don't want them super close together, but they won't really spread out a lot. We'll just spread them into nice even rounds and then pop them into the oven and they'll bake for about 10 to 12 minutes until they're golden on the edges, puffed and cooked through. That's perfect. So our cookies are now ready to go into the oven. We can refer to the app and set our timer to do a 10 minute timing to bake the cookies and pop them in. I like to check them halfway through just to make sure they're browning evenly. But again, set your timer and let's pop these in. Let's get started making our mixed berry lime smoothie bowl with bananas and granola. First thing we're going to do is we've washed and prepped all of our produce. We're gonna zest our lime, so we wanna make sure to wash it and dry it. I peeled our banana and I'm just going to take my knife and thinly slice it across to use to garnish my bowl. 
You could do this at the end, but this way, since everything is frozen, we're ready to top it and eat it while it's perfect out of the blender. So just slice and set that banana aside. And, whoops, my berry's almost done. Our recipe calls for blackberries to top, but there were such beautiful organic strawberries at the store that I grabbed some of those as well and some fresh raspberries. So point being that you can garnish this with whatever you love. You don't have to stick to just the blackberries. Now that our banana is all prepped, I'm gonna measure our ingredients into the blender to make our smoothie. So we're gonna start with a cup of Greek yogurt. I'm using a plain Greek yogurt that is full fat today because I like that richness against the, the fruit. We don't have a lot of uh, other things going on and since we do have the acidity and tartness of the berries, it's going to pair perfectly with a nice rich whole milk yogurt. If you do want to use a lower fat, that's perfectly fine. So we'll just stir it Yogurt always has a little bit of moisture that settles at the top. And I'll measure out about a cup. And you don't have to be super precise with a smoothie. If you like a little bit more berries or you want some more yogurt, all good. All right. I'm just going to add that yogurt into my blender. I try to put the wet ingredients at the bottom when I'm blending just because if I started with the frozen berries, it would have a tendency to, to make the blender work really hard to make the puree. So it's just a little bit easier if you start with the wet things at the bottom. What to do, here we go. I'm gonna measure out a half a cup of whole milk. And again, if you have 2% or skim, that's fine too. We've got our lucerne whole milk yogurt, or uh, milk, to add to it, and I'm measuring half a cup. So always remember when you're measuring liquids, look from the side so that you can tell you have the right amount. We'll add our milk. And now I want to use the zest and juice of my lime. Just clean up a tiny bit. Get our yogurt out of the way. Make some space. So always zest before you cut your fruit in half. It's just so much easier to handle the lime when it's whole than when you have a half that's slippery and running all over the place. So I just want about half the lime's worth of zest. I've got my microplane grater, which is an awesome tool for grating zest. It's actually a woodworker's tool that some genius grabbed and said, that's the perfect thing for zesting my citrus, and they were 100% correct. You really want just that bright, colorful outer zest of the lime or if you're doing a lemon or an orange same thing applies you don't want to get into any of that white pith because that will tend to be bitter lime zest is also very very strong so start with a little bit less and you can always add more the next time but i'm going to use about half the limes worth of zest and i'll just tip that right into the food processor or the blender in this case cut my lime in half and since i'm only making two bowls i only need half pop that into my juicer and juice it right into the blender. You could also do this in a food processor if you don't have a blender. You would just pulse it together. So that's good. We've got a juice of half of a lime. And again, remember you're following along in the app. All the steps are laid out for you. But really as long as everything makes it into the blender, your smoothie is going to be great. I'm going to measure in my fruit next. So we've got our signature select triple berry blend today. A mixture of blackberries, blueberries, raspberries. And we're going to use about two cups. I might be a little bit generous because I like berries. I'm going to add that in. And we're going to sweeten our smoothie with a little bit of honey and season it with a bit of cinnamon. If you don't love the cinnamon, you can certainly 
leave it out. Just a quarter teaspoon for two. And we're going to add two tablespoons of honey for sweetness. One great little trick is I sprayed the inside of my measuring spoon with some baking spray just to help make it easy for the honey to slide into the blender so I'm not having to really work to get it out. And you can use more or less of the honey to your taste. If you like maple syrup, if you prefer that and want to add the maple, you could certainly do that as well. And you can eyeball this. I set my spoon down for the next one so I can use two hands. There we go. A couple of tablespoons of honey. And you see that the honey just slides right out. Whenever you're measuring something sticky, if you can, that little bit of pan spray really saves you a lot of work. Now I'm going to set this onto my blender, put the lid on, got my Vitamix set to smoothie, and I'm just going to go ahead and puree it. Sometimes you do need to reach in there with your spatula and just help the ingredients move along. Oops. That's perfect. Now I'm just going to pulse it from here. Looks great. Just give it a last stir to make sure it's even, and then we're ready to build our bowls. I'm making two bowls today. Clean up my counter. Move some of these extra things out of our way. We've got our bananas, we've got our berries, and today I'm going to use the Open Nature Honey Nut Granola. You can use any granola you like. There's a lovely maple pecan, uh, there are chocolate ones, all different kinds of flavors. And just because I want a little extra boost of protein today, I toasted up some of our Open Nature sliced almonds and I'm going to use those to garnish as well. So I'm just going to divide the, this mixture evenly between the two bowls. It's nice and thick and that's how you want it. Since we're eating it with a spoon out of a bowl, it can be far more solid than if we were drinking this on the go. Although you could do that. You could certainly add a bit more milk and have more of a shake than a bowl. I'm going to top each with about two-thirds of a cup of our granola. And you can have fun building these any which way you like. I'm going to put the granola kind of on one side. Of each bowl to make it pretty. And like I said, you can use more or less to your taste. That seems like a good amount. I'm going to arrange half my sliced banana on each one. I like to just pick up the slices, that's why I left them kind of intact. Just want to pick them up and fan them out across the top of your bowl. That's beautiful. Same on the other one. Sliced banana is so slippery. It's part of the fun. There we go. Got some nice sliced banana on each one. And then we can use any of the berries that we like. Some blackberries. Like I said, since I've got these beautiful strawberries, I'm going to add some of those as well. And everyone can build theirs however they like. That's kind of the fun and beauty of 
a bowl like this. And we'll top with some of our toasted nuts. And those are ready to enjoy. Next we'll be preparing our chicken taco salad boats. As I mentioned at the beginning of the event, we have our meal planning app and this is one of our recipes that you'll find categorized under the super simple options. Uh, you'd also find it under Mexican uh, as we have lots of ethnic choices. So this is going to be one that you'll be able to find all your ingredients directions and step-by-step uh, -step instructions in our meal planning app. So if you have the open app open and are following along, you can just set it next to you and as we go step to step, just remember it's just placing your hand over the app that will advance you to the next step. So I've, I've first assembled all my ingredients, washed and dried my tomatoes, scallions, I've rinsed my black beans, um, and I've washed and dried my lime. We're going to start by cutting our tomatoes in half or if they're large, cut them into quarters. These are going to be used to garnish our taco salad boats at the end, so you don't want them to be too large that they're falling off and difficult to eat. So take your sharp knife and just remove any stems if there are and cut them into bite-sized pieces. Definitely want to make sure you have a nice sharp knife. to help you speed that along. So we've got a pint of grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, whichever ones you find are most beautiful at the marketplace. These are our signature select tomatoes. So, and remember you're able to easily add ingredients to your shopping list right from the app in that meal planning section. So once I've got the tomatoes cut into halves or quarters, I'm gonna transfer them to a plate and again, they're used to finish our dish at the end. So we'll just set them aside and keep them to one part and move on to cutting our scallions. Like I said, I've rinsed and washed my scallions. I want to trim off the root ends and just set those aside. And then slice. I like to cut on a bias. I just think they're prettier. So gather everything together. Try to curl your fingers under a bit and keep your thumb behind. That's going to help keep your fingers safe while you're slicing. And if you're using a chef's knife like I am today, this knife is designed to kind of rock up and down on its point. So you'll just cut as you push them through and work your hands back away from that cutting edge. And slice all the way from the green down all the way to the white part at the bottom. If you like, you could actually even toss the white ends into the skillet with the ground chicken as we're cooking and treat them almost more like onion and top, the top darker green parts more like an herb at the end. So I'll transfer those to my plate also. I think I will do that. So I'm going to keep the, the whiter part here on my cutting board and I'll use that as I'm cooking. Chefs never follow the instructions exactly. We've always got to make it a little nicer. The trash aside. Next I'm going to just wipe off my knife because I don't want my lime to necessarily taste like onions. Clean up a little bit. And I'll cut my lime into wedges. I always cut from pole to pole first in half. Lay it on its flat side so it's nice and steady. And then I'll cut each of these into four wedges in half and then in half again. And those will be easy to squeeze over our, our lettuce boats while eating. Just move those onto my dish. Again in half and in half again. Our lime wedges are ready to go. And now I'm going to preheat my skillet. And I want to go over medium high heat and have a wooden spoon handy to stir my ground chicken. 
I've also got ready to go my taco seasoning. I'm going to use three tablespoons of it. I just have it in a bowl so it's easy to measure. And as I said, I opened up and rinsed out our, um, I'm using Open Nature uh, Organics uh, black beans to go into our tacos filling. So while my skillet's preheating, I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil to help brown the chicken. Just a, table, uh, a couple of teaspoons, rather. And as soon as this oil is shimmering hot, I'll add our ground chicken. You always want to choose a nice heavy skillet that will help them heat evenly, it'll help your food cook evenly, um, and keep you from having spots that stick and burn while you're cooking. So it's just going to take a few seconds for that oil to get warm. While we're waiting on the oil, what we can do is get some of our other garnishes ready. We've got a Mexican style cheese blend that we're using today. Our Just going to pour some of that into a small bowl so that our garnishes are ready to go. And we've also got some nice fresh guacamole. I just have a little bit of plastic covering it to keep it from browning. I'll take that out of the way so our garnishes are all set. Pan's nice and hot, so I'll go ahead and add my ground chicken. Break it up with the wooden spoon. And we're going to cook this for about two to three minutes until it's no longer that, that light pink color, adjusting my heat. You can also make this dish with ground turkey if you prefer. Um, you can do ground white meat or a, a mixture of white and dark. I like the ones that are a little bit richer. I feel like you get more flavor, but you can use whichever is your family's favorite. And the chicken cooks really quickly especially in a nice wide hot skillet like we're using. And at this stage I will add that little bit of extra scallion that I kept aside. That's just going to help give us a bit more flavor. Simple fillings like this taco uh, mixture can be made ahead. This makes a great base of a quick and easy lunch if you have some leftover rice and you want to make your own uh, taco rice bowl for lunch the next day, double your recipe, and then save yourself work another time. So this looks perfect. I'm going to go ahead and add my black beans. Three tablespoons of my taco seasoning. and two-thirds of a cup of water that I pre-measured. Stir this together and just let this simmer until all of that water has been absorbed and the flavors marry. As soon as I get this evenly incorporated, and that liquid comes to a boil, I'm going to turn the heat down just to let it slowly simmer. I don't want to boil this really hard and get that chicken dried out too much. You just want it to simmer. That looks great. And while this is simmering, we'll get our lettuce leaves ready. 
So we have some hearts of romaine that we're gonna use as our serving boats for our chicken taco mixture. And I just trimmed the root end off of the, the hearts of romaine. And then I have them in a bowl of ice water. I took a damp paper towel and just draped it over top. That's gonna help keep your lettuce leaves nice and crisp and vibrant. And you can just separate them out into the leaves. I have a little bit of cold water in the bowl and you really want something that can hold some filling that's easy and sturdy like this to pick up and enjoy. And we really only need, since we're making four servings here, you need six to eight leaves of lettuce. So I'll just pick the nicest, biggest ones to use as serving. I'm gonna set, turn this down since it's simmering. And set the remaining leaves of romaine aside. You can also, another great tip, for this is if you want to, instead of putting it in these lettuce boats, use uh, a ripe avocado as the base for your uh, taco boat. That also works really, really well. Sort of doubling down on the guacamole. In order to do that, I would just make sure you choose a nice, ripe but still firm avocado. I always cut down through the nose and then just rotate around the pit in the center. twist and you'll have your half avocado ready to use. We can squeeze a little bit of extra fresh lime juice over it to keep it from browning. And that's a great thing to do with leftover take for lunch or to um, just as a change of pace from the lettuce leaves. I'm just going to give this a quick stir. And as I mentioned, you can do this with any ground meat, whether it's chicken or turkey. If you want to swap a, a, a kidney bean for the black bean, you can certainly do that as well. If you wanted to increase the spiciness and add in a minced jalapeno pepper, you can absolutely use this as a blank canvas. Many, many things could go in this filling that would make it really wonderful. That's just going to need to simmer for another minute. Set up a couple of plates. And while we have a moment, while our, while, while our filling is still cooking, just a reminder about the app that you're able to go in and really explore and customize it to meet your family's needs. If you have people following different diets, whether that's keto, paleo, uh, whether you want Italian for dinner or Mexican or Japanese, you can search for all those different items within the meal planning app, drop the ingredients right into your shopping list, and plan simple, simple meals that way. Step-by-step -step guidance as well while you're cooking. So right now I could have set a timer through the app and it would give me a, a cue for three minutes, five minutes, whatever it may be, instructed in the recipe to help me just manage my time and have a great result in the end. So Fresh Pass members, don't forget you've got great perks in terms of being able to shop and get free deliveries for $30 minimum orders um, and also leverage a discount on the Open Nature and Organic private label product. And we've used a number of things today just in the course of cooking, uh, whether it's lucerne cheese or um, our signature select tomatoes, the romaine lettuce, the ground chicken. There's so many great options in store for you. So hopefully you'll have a great time exploring the app. All right, and our filling is looking really nice. I would let this simmer just a bit longer so that sauce really tightens up and really coats the beans and the chicken. And as I was shopping and preparing to uh, share this recipe with you today, I noticed a few things in store that caught my eye. Um, some nice organic blue corn tortilla chips and 
an organic chunky salsa and I thought to myself, well, if I wanted nachos, these two things would be perfect. Or if I just wanted to incorporate something crunchy besides the lettuce into my dinner, uh, you know, maybe having the salsa to, to spoon over top of the filling or sharing, you know, having some chips along with it would be a great other, other way to enjoy this same uh, filling. So let, let, let your own creativity be your guide. There's so many different ways to enjoy something like this that's simple but can do many, many things. All right, this is looking great. And as you can see, I can run my, my spoon through the filling and I re really don't see any more loose liquid readily flowing together. That water has really reduced down and evaporated and, and turned into more of a sauce for our chicken. And this is ready to go. And if you're ready to eat, you can just have everyone assemble their lettuce uh, boats and, and sit down to eat, or you can, you can serve the filling in its own container and have everyone build uh, as they go. But I'll assemble a few just to show us through. So we'll take our leaf of lettuce, spoon some of our filling right into the boat. Top it with some of the shredded cheese, which will melt down onto that nice warm filling. Add a few pieces of our tomatoes. A sprinkle of scallions. And maybe a dollop of our fresh guacamole. I'm actually, here's what I'm gonna do. I grab my dish. And since we've got this lovely avocado sitting here, we'll do the same. So if you decided you wanted to build yours on top of an avocado, sit. We'll just take it. And what you can also do, I think it would just make e eating it just a little bit simpler, is take the tip of your knife, score your avocado right in the skin. Don't press in too hard. You don't want to go through that outer portion. But if you just kind of go back and forth and cross hatch the avocado, give it a little bit of a squeeze to open up those cuts we just made. And then spoon our filling into the, into the little belly button that the, that the seed left. And let the, the juices run into the avocado itself. That's another great way to enjoy Again, we can just top it with some cheese, some sliced scallions, and a little bit of tomato. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this. And now we're ready to assemble our ice cream sandwiches. Our banana bread granola cookies are ready. They've come out of the oven and are completely cooled. We want them to be at room temperature or even to pop them in the refrigerator for a few minutes because we don't want our ice cream or our filling to melt when it hits the cookie. So you can see that they're nice and golden on the bottom and I'm just gonna flip over the bottoms so that I can scoop the filling and then top with the second cookie. Today we're gonna to use our open nature cashew based non-dairy frozen dessert. This is a great option to make this vegan friendly, multiple diets friendly. The one thing though that you do need to keep in mind when you have a, a frozen dessert that's made with a nut based milk like cashew, that this is a lot harder and firmer than traditional ice cream. So what I've done is I actually let this sit out for quite a while uh, at room temperature, or you can even pop it into your refrigerator for a half an hour to let it soften slowly. And if you need to even pop it into the microwave for like 10 seconds at a time. And then I scooped it into this bowl and just took a spatula and mixed it to get it creamy so that it's easy for me to scoop. Otherwise, because of the high, higher fat content of a nut-based uh, milk, it can be almost, um, crumbly in texture when you try to scoop it out. So in order to make it creamy, this is the best way to handle it. And you can do this part ahead, top them and pop them into the freezer. And you see, I have a few that have already been assembled and are ready to go. So I'm just gonna top each of my bottoms with a scoop of my ice cream, one pint 
is a perfect amount to fill four of these. And then all we have to do is pick up the top and press down and we've got a beautiful ice cream sandwich that's completely vegan friendly, unique and different, and have fun with the filling. Ice cream or any frozen dessert like this comes in a whole host of flavors. Peanut butter with banana, delicious. Chocolate with banana, delicious. Salted caramel with banana, really delicious. So feel free to make it something fun. Everyone can scoop their own favorite flavor inside. You could even roll this in some chopped nuts or some fun uh, garnishes to finish it off. Really have fun and play. This is a great time to bring everyone together and let them kind of customize and make everything exactly how they want it. Like I said, these can be wrapped up and put in the freezer. And so if you don't want to have all four today, have one for a snack later in the week as a treat. Uh, make them once, enjoy many times over. So hope you try this recipe out and enjoy it with your family. Thank you so much for joining and cooking through these super simple recipes with me today. I hope you have fun exploring our new meal planning app and discover lots of new delicious recipes to cook for family and friends. We hope to see you in our stores very soon.